welcome everyone to a very special edition of Game Reactor Live because today we are not actually playing anything for you. We will be watching something with you. We'll be watching the brand new reveal of the new Assassin's Creed game. And I'm joined Don't today. say the name yet. No, we won't say <laughs> the name. Otherwise, we're going to use code names <laughs> or some weird figum jig. We'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. The, the embargo runs out at 6, which is when we will show the trailer here on the stream and talk about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what more will be stuff that we can't talk about until six. There is a lot of stuff we can't talk about until a bit later on, so you have to bear with us until then. But what is actually going to happen is that we've started the stream today an hour beforehand, because the trailer will debut at six, as will a lot of impressions and a lot of stuff and a lot of information we have for you. But until then, we're going to um, bring in a little guest, talk a little bit about the future and the past of the series and what we expect will happen in the coming reveal. Yeah. It should also be said that uh, planning this stream, we were going to have a guest from Ubisoft here in the studio. Yes. But uh, forces beyond our control have kept him from us. So yes. So I'm here instead. Yeah, so I, I, uh, luckily I could draft Dorian because um, Axel, as we have uh, maybe advertised a bit heavily, would uh, stop by the stream, is stuck in an airport, so he won't be able to join us. But Dory is here to save the day, Anas is behind, behind the camera instead, and we have a superb team of very skilled people here to make sure that this Assassin's Creed reveal will be dissected, will be analyzed, and will be gone through proper. Yes. And uh, to start it off, we actually have a Game Reactor user here that's uh, joining us through Skype. Let's put on our headsets and yes. uh, introduce him. Sebastian. Yeah, who has been one of the winners of our Assassin's Creed Challenge competition. Hello, Sebastian. Hello. Hello. So, now that we are very close to the assass new Assassin's Creed reveal, which was previously rumored to be called Assassin's Creed Victory, a couple of leaks actually showed the game off in action. So what are your expectations for the game, Sebastian? Uh, yeah, my expectations to this game is uh, hopefully uh, new settings, uh, a lot of urban environment, I hope so. Um, I think uh, Unity kind of uh, re-energized uh, Assassin's Creed uh, and gave it uh, some of the things that lost. Uh, in the previous yeah, games. I think th I think that's true. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the thing that I'm looking most forward to is, I mean, it's no secret that Unity wasn't quite complete at launch. No. It had uh, some severe issues that uh, took a couple of months to fix. What I'm hoping is, is that the new one will not only be a fantastic game, but also be the game that is supposed to be at launch. Yeah. What w I mean, uh, I w had the pleasure to review uh, Unity at launch, and um, one of the key things was that a lot of technical testing, play testing, um, was not done properly uh, because that the game is, you know, as you might know, that it works on the same scale as Call of Duty, that it's a huge franchise with yearly um, editions. So one could speculate that they don't have the proper time to test it through and catch all the bugs and get all the glitches before launch, which Unity showed. But this time, one of the things that has been heavily rumored as well is that it's a new studio leading the development. So maybe we will get that refreshment, maybe we'll get that replenishment of energy that the series has needed. But I think it's true what Sebastian said that Unity, while a bit unfinished, was still a very clean slate for the franchise. Oh, yeah. Very a very good idea to start ahead and not go along with Connor, the Assassin's Creed protagonist from um, Assassin's Creed 3. So we have a new template sort of to go from. And Unity changed a lot of stuff for the better, I think. We'll see what happens next. So um, Sebastian, what is your uh, history with uh, the Assassin's Creed games? Have you played them all and uh, through their entirety? Yeah, yeah. I started with Assassin's Creed 1 on the Xbox, uh, Xbox 360. Uh, I loved it uh, back then. Uh, the only thing I thought was a bad thing back then was uh, um, how similar all the missions were. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I think uh, Brother uh, Assassin's Creed 2 uh, gave it a new feel, like going to Firenze, uh, Venice, and uh, going through uh, Ezio's yeah. life. Um, I love character by, by many yeah. fans. I also consider Ezio to be um, the best character the series has had uh, up until now. 
And I think also one of the key features that makes Echo a good character is that we got the chance to spend a lot of time with him through three games instead of one, where each and every Assassin's Creed protagonist had only had those 30, 35 hours that it took for, to get through one game to get acquainted with him or her. Yeah, we, we basically got to see like his entire lifetime yeah. unfold. Yeah, so I think that is one of the most key interesting aspects about Ezio, which I also think is why people form such an uh, attachment to him. But uh, that's um, maybe one of the interesting things about the victory reveal when it leaked uh, late ya last year was v that... Victory. Vi victory, yes. Please understand. Um, was that it was not Arno from uh, the uh, French Revolution that we would be seeing, but instead an English character. And more wasn't revealed other than the setting, yeah. I think. But we don't know. I, I mean, those are leaks. Um. Those are leaks. We have, we, we have no substantiated evidence to support any of the stuff we're actually saying. Yet. Yet. But soon, in about 55 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> we'll know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're paddling here, but um, the, th the thing I wanted to ask you, Sebastian, is that while Unity sort of, um, you know, the new setting, new character, but also a bit of streamlining of many of the mechanics, um, so it's sort of a clean slate, they took a lot of features out and sort of modernized a lot of the features that were already there from sort of the core template. What do you think uh, that Ubisoft needs to do in order to make it feel even better than Unity did? Uh, I think uh, the thing that uh, made Unity uh, a bit uh, unique was uh, the co-op missions. Uh, and I think if uh, Ubisoft wanted to up the game, they need to make uh, the story mode uh, co-op playable. Mm. That could be a, a really cool, uh, cool yeah. feature. I, that's, it's funny you mentioned the co-op missions because I actually never really got a true hands-on on that. There was a lot of server issues back uh, in the original review period. So I only got to try out with our uh, former editor-in-chief, Lee, which, uh, and we were only able to play the two-player missions, not the four-player missions. But to me, it seemed oh. like there was a bit, much, a lot of chaos going on in those missions. But uh, you, you may have another experience with them? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I, I spent a lot of time with uh, two of my friends uh, yeah. gaming. Uh, and uh, the co-op missions had their own storyline, and or not own storyline, but they added to the story of Arno and the French yeah. Revolution, um, and that was a pretty cool thing. Um, and I'd like to see that transfer uh, transformed over in the in the new Assassin's Creed, so you actually could take and play it uh, in in the history. Yeah, mode. yeah, yeah. I th I think I think that's I think that's true. Um, it's it's definitely one of the more you know sort of time-centric features, you know, the, the thing about g having co-op, sort of friend-based co-op in every single game, and something Ubisoft has really, really pushed lately. And I think in Unity it showed a lot of promise, uh, at least uh, where the, when s it depends on the mission structure, but I think a lot of the sort of very dull, uh, follow this character, protect her from this or protect him from that, um, really got sort of sparked up by having the co-op features in them. Um, the question, the question is, um, I think, is that if they they really need to nail the balance between the characters, uh, because from what I from what I played, there was there seemed to be like um, it was too easy to get in trouble with a bad team, and too hard to get in trouble with a good team. I thought that that there were balancing issues there. Yeah, 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 definitely. So. Um also, I'd like to see, uh, for, for the player side, more diversity in the characters uh, that they're playing. Oh, right, you. yeah. Uh, but uh, Because you had, like, the ranged uh, sniper kind of guy with his muskets, and uh, you have the heavy duty and the, the stealthy and the healer. And you, you could also walk through every mission if you just uh, went on with the stealth. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there are some, some structural issues there, but you, it is to be expected when they are debuting a brand new concept. That was one of the things about Unity is that taking the stuff away that didn't work and trying to add something brand new, which I think is interesting. So the yeah. co-op is really interesting. Um, so have you uh, in uh, later, I mean earlier Assassin's Creed games, have you uh, had any experience with the competitive multiplayer? Because that's something I've never even tried to get into yeah yeah i had uh, it uh, reminded me of the that uh, mod uh, for 
Counter-Strike uh, boat or ship or what it was called, where you're just running around and trying to yeah. kill each other. Um, and it, uh, for me, it got bored pretty yeah. quick because it had anything to do, not, nothing to do with the Assassin's Creed, just uh, running around and going yeah. nuts. Yeah, actually, that's kind of funny because I thought that was more interesting than the game itself because okay. I'm, I'm not, not that invested in the lore, I have to say. Yeah. But uh, I felt the, and I also really enjoyed that mode that he's talking about, ship. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, the old ship mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so definitely. I think I, I, I really enjoyed the, the hide and seek uh, portion of it. And uh, again, as it is with many Assassin's Creed games, I thought that the original concept and the original idea is really cool. I mean, you, you take some of the key pillars like, you know, s uh, stealth based combat and blending into the environments. You take that from single player into multiplayer. I think that's really interesting. But I do agree with Sebastian in the sense that very quickly these matches descended from these very cool new concepts and into people simply running around in circles. Yeah, they kind of mastered the, the concept. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. So. Uh, there was, I mean, f for me, when I, I played it back in, I think, Revelations, and to me there was no, there was no real sense that the game rewarded you for sticking with your Assassin's Creed knowledge, sort of. No, definitely yeah, not. No, so th there, was, there were no people blending into the environments, there was no, there was no uh, sort of adversary that tiptoed around the environment and waited for you and you stalked each other from the rooftop, rooftops, that never happened. It's just people running around. Needlessly, but I, I I I'm not smart enough to know how to fix that because that's player behavior. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like you know they figure out what work and then yeah, kind of grind it up. But that the the funny thing is that th that specific multiplayer mode uh, has garnered a lot of sort of uh, fan praise over the years, and has a very steep following every year. Um, so we will s we'll see. I mean, it seems to me that to be a sort of a tradition that. Every time a new Assassin's Creed game comes out, it has a new sort of multiplayer-centric feature it wants to show off. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they've changed it up a yeah. lot. I mean, the, you had the competitive multiplayer, and then uh, last time around we we had the the co-op. Yeah. So it's it's you know we'll see what they what they do with. Yeah, the um, uh, I think we're a lot of a uh, lot of. I'm I'm not a fan exactly. I know a bit about it, but I'm I'm not I'm not s sitting clinching my fists, hoping uh, waiting for the next one, but. One thing I'd like to see is that a concept that completely changes the way you play. For example, because Black Flag was my favorite, and it was my favorite because of naval combat and the way naval combat worked, and it completely changed the dynamic of the game. I thought, I thought, and uh, but Unity was sort of a throwback to old Assassin's, uh, an old older Assassin's Creed formula. So, so, but what is your favorite one, Sebastian? I think that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think actually uh, Assassin's Creed uh, 2 is uh, still my favorite, mm. uh, but uh, Uni Unity is oh, up really? there. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, the new uh, way to steer Arno down the buildings is just not uh, have to leap out in the yeah. mid-air and hope and pray for the best. Uh, I think it's uh, nice that they had uh, parkour. Uh, yeah, the 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 parkour downwards parkour was really really nice. And also one thing that I really liked when I reviewed uh, Unity and was one of my sort of key plus points was that there is still that confusion when you sort of run. You you still climb things that you shouldn't be climbing, and he still grabs onto objects that he shouldn't. But I think parkour and running and scaling up and down buildings works a lot better now and it feels more weighty. I think back in Assassin's Creed 2, Ezio felt very light. Like I if there was a sudden breeze, he could be blown completely away. I think that Arno felt more weighty and uh, heavy. And I think that really uh, made the parkour more enjoyable for me. Yeah, definitely so. I think that... Uh, you know, move, movement is such a key aspect that y it's something you really, you really shouldn't mess up. No, no, it, it, it's what gives uh, the game feeling and uh, authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the th uh, other things I wanted to ask you, Sebastian, which I know is sort of, it's one of, I think, one, one of the more divisive aspects of the entire franchise is the modern day stuff. Because even here at the office, yeah. we are completely divided on whether or not we liked the modern day sort of uh, setting and whether or not we dislike it. So w which side are you on? 
Oh, I, I, I'm pretty tired, uh, I must say, uh, because I was uh, in the Assassin's Creed 1, I felt it was a waste yeah. of time. Uh, while in, uh, I think it's a Revelation, uh, where you're beginning to sneak around in the urban environment and having the bleeding yeah. effect uh, come, come alive, I think that uh, worked pretty yeah. good. I also thought that it was a waste of time in the beginning, but I also thought that oh. In games like Revelations and especially Three, um, Desmond became a really vital part to my enjoyment, personal enjoyment of the game, because I thought or anticipated or maybe even hoped that this would all end out in Desmond's own Assassin's Creed game, in a sort of you know Splinter Cell style that we would eventually arrive in a modern day setting where all of these assassin memories would be combined into what Desmond would become. Yeah, I, I thought that as well. Uh, and I was pretty shocked uh, when yeah, we can, he, he yeah, got we can, killed Yeah, we can off. say that. Spoilers for everyone. Desmond's dead, okay? <laughs> We're sorry. Yeah. It's not our fault. But he, he got killed off by some goddess figurine. I, uh, he, or he sacrificed himself, I'm pretty sure. Isn't that, yeah, yeah. yeah he, yeah, yeah, for the world. Themselves. And now the, yeah. the thing is, the present day stuff is still with us. It's wi it was with us in Black Flag and with us in Unity, but it has sort of taken on a very different role and something I quite dislike. You know, the modern day setting is basically just, well, Abstergo, the company that made the Animus, is making sort of history tourism and you, the player, has to go in and record these sessions so that you can yes, promote uh, them as tourism. Next level mocap. Yeah, ma next level mocap. And yeah. I always thought that they have sort of taken such a backseat that it's just a wonder it's still there now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it doesn't if it doesn't mean anything, then why have it? Yeah, because yeah, they, yeah. they changed it from being yeah. a character in yeah, the yeah. future to being yeah. you, the player, in the future. Yeah, and it's and it works so terribly. And the thing is, peop as we just said, people were very divided on Desmond, whether or not they liked him as a character or whether or not he was needed, but he had presence. He was there and he meant something for the story. Now it's just like, well, it's actually you that's recording these sessions. Dive into another exciting period of history and record what you can. And then sometimes you have some sort of sense that there are these hackers out there or remnants of the assassin order that are sort of meddling with Abstergo's affairs, but you never, you never find out. You never, there's never any progression there. It's just Templars have the upper hand. The assassins are attempting to push the, the balance of power, but it's not really working for them. And it's just, you know, it's a stalemate game, I always thought, at, in, at least in Black Flag and in Unity. And it's so secondary. But then again, there are, pe there are people yeah. who just, uh, both here on uh, this part of Game Reactor and uh, in the other Game Reactor networks that feel like that the present day setting was always a downturn, always. And they just really want to be an assassin. And I, I get that as well. I get that, I get that sentiment. So. But it, it, it'll, be, it'll be exciting. So, um, Sebastian, one, thing, one more thing I wanted to ask you was if we maybe consider that the Victory League is untrue, and it's not, and we don't know for sure where it's set. What would be your top three settings for an Assassin's Creed game? Oh yeah, you know, I'm ca catching you on the spot here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, pre pretty yeah. much. <laughs> um, I could see a city as um, uh, Egypt. Yeah, uh, would be kind a of lot fun. of people have said Egypt. Uh, I think over the years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wishful thinking, uh, some places can Scandinavia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Vikings. Yeah. Vikings, yeah. Actually, I think that was yeah. on... Um, in When you start Unity, spoilers, there is sort of a list of places that Abstergo wants to explore. And one of them, I think, is Stockholm. I'm, I was, I'm pretty sure it was yeah. also yeah, Feudal Japan. Yeah, Feudal Japan, one of the things that people have been craving for years was there. But I'm not sure whether or not Ubisoft consider that sort of style to be done, crossed off now that they have Assassin's Creed 
China Chronicles China out. We'll mm. we'll see. Yeah. Uh, else, uh, I think uh, Spain, some place in Spain could be a nice yeah. place. Uh, you have the mountains, you have uh, still some of their big older yeah. city you can run around in. Um, I think uh, the problem with uh, Black Flag and um, Liberty, uh, or Victory or whatever yeah. it was called, uh, Assassin's Creed 3 was they went over the pond. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it kills some of the original uh, Assassin's Creed. Feel. Yeah, it's there. Definitely, is a European feel to it. And one of the things that I think one of the major complaints that was about Assassin's Creed Three was that the lack of sort of an urban environment that was interesting to traverse. I mean, in Assassin's Creed Three, the tallest building you got was some of these wooden churches that was placed in New York. Uh, I mean. And it wasn't really, really, I thought, interesting to explore that space. Um, whereas, you know, you, Brotherhood, you, you traverse Rome. That's a, like a very sort of picturesque setting to go with. So I think that would be... I think it, I think it would make sense to place it in Europe. Mo mostly because of the history. Yeah. Yeah, definitely so. But then again, I, I, I could also... I, I, I quite like Assassin's Creed 3, um, despite the criticisms. I didn't consider it a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was good in its own way. And some of the I liked I liked the uh, traversing the forests, hunting animals, that mm. kind of stuff. I thought that was cool, and that was when we started to see that was before that the entire gaming industry became obsessed with bows. Yeah, yeah, that completely kind of, obsessed. Kind of Every game had bows. Kind of the start of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crisis that, that, Three that, and that, Tomb Raider. That and Crisis Three, I think, were the, the forerunners on that. Yeah, and. Uh, I really like using the bow, hunting animals, and that kind of stuff. I thought that was really, really cool. But then again, Connor, not the most interesting character. I'm sorry, it's, mm. it, it, he was really poor. I actually, I, I, I never finished that. No, no, that no. Game. A lot of people didn't. It was also very, very long. Then again, very <laughs> then again, I also didn't finish Black Flag, even though I spent, I mean, tons and tons of yeah, hours yeah, on yeah. it because I just, I got my pirate ship. Yeah, and the only time that I went and did the story mode was, was when I'm like, mm, I want an upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I'll, yeah. I did a little story mode, unlock yeah, an yeah. upgrade, and then just back to the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's the cool Pirate. thing. Pirate. But that's a cool thing about Black Flag. Yeah. It really encourages encourages you to do nothing. It's the same thing with GTA V. I feel a lot of people say, well, I've spent 200 hours in GTA V. Well, what have you done? Well, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, that, well, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, that's because the it, the game world is good. So I mean. Uh, I, I felt the same in Black Flag. I did finish it, and let me just tell you, you're not really missing out on the main aspect. The main aspect, I think Sebastian can agree, the key strength of Black Flag is not its narrative. It's more just, you know, being, a, being in that pirate environment, upgrading your ship, going in naval combat, mm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, de de definitely so, definitely so. Uh, I thought uh, that Ubisoft had a pretty good pirate game and just uh, was lacking a platform to yeah. launch it on. And then they said, oh, it's yeah, speed. definitely. Here, here you go. And it's also, and I also, one of the, the funny things was that uh, when, when Assassin's Creed 3 launched and we saw that the sales numbers were like really high and it was going really well, everyone thought that they were going to stick with Connor for the time being. And I even think at the end of Assassin's Creed 3, they sort of mentioned that the next game would be about slavery and, it's like, oh, oh, well, Connor Shida Stay is going to have a period like Ezio, three games, maybe see him from start to finish. But then it's just, no, 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 there are pirates and this is his grandfather. Mm. That, that was really it. Yeah. So it seemed to be coming yeah. a bit from left field, the entire pirate thing. I yeah. liked it. I really yeah, liked it. I mean, but I also think that Connor maybe got, I'm saying this not having finished the game, but yeah. I, I think that Connor maybe got a little bit of bad rap. He did. Because, I mean, Ezio wasn't interesting or entertaining the entire way through. They kind of no. gave him an arc where he was, well, kind of a bastard, actually. Yeah, he was. And then, you know, you had, the, the, had him coming back from that. Yeah. And, you know, it made him interesting. Maybe the only thing is that, like you said, Connor was a little bit too kind of flat. Yeah, he's stoic. He was yeah. really sort of heroic and took himself very, very seriously, whereas... Yeah, it didn't give him enough flaws. No, it did indeed. But and I also think that that might be why they didn't revisit the character, because his arc was already over in, in Assassin's Creed 3. There, there was nothing to continue, whereas Ezio, when you finish Assassin's Creed 2, he's still a bit of a bastard. 
It's only when he gets older in yeah. Revelations that he, you know, sobers up, becomes sort of this fatherly figure for the uh, Assassin's Order. So, but I'm I'm still I'm still curious. I mean, if the again, considering that the Victory League m might not be anything particular, we could still see Arno return. I mean, it's not out of the question. Yeah, no. So I I, I mean, I guess we'll no. see when the the trailer launches here in. Half an hour? Half an hour, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're, we can, st we can still muster up some energy. Yeah, yeah. We can. It's not, yeah. Doria's has opened, uh, Mountain Dew, everything's okay. I've run out of coffee. Yeah. But Maybe yeah. we should get to the, the swag portion. Yes, yes, thank you. Because that's the energy we need. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. we went around the office and we found the rest of the uh, Assassin's Creed stuff that we had lying around connected to the older games. And we thought, oh, this is kind of a, maybe the last chance to, uh, to yes. get that out to the users. Yes. So we have kind of a mix the of a uh, different Assassin's Creed game track. Yeah. The truth is, people, people who visit Game Reactor, um, we have a lot of shit here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. And... One of the, a lot of this shit is Assassin's Creed shit. Swag is the other word for it. Well, and we figured what is the, the first S in swag? Yes, for? yeah, indeed. So. so we wanted to give something out to you. And the most exciting part of this prize is that we have three PC copies of Assassin's Creed Rogue to give out to someone very lucky. So, oh, three people. I'm yeah. not going to give one, pe one no. person three copies. That would that be would very be, yeah, lucky. That would be uh, very lucky indeed. But if games aren't your thing, then we also have clothing. Because clothing is everyone's thing. And we have an Assassin's Creed sweater from Black Flag. I'll hold it up here. Where it says the year that the game is taking place in, so you don't forget. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> And we have a, I have no idea what this is. This is, I think, just the flag, which is pretty useless. But you're a pirate, so maybe you want this hanging on your wall yeah, yeah. or on your workplace if you want to be really, really unpopular with your colleagues. And last but not least, a little pocket watch, yeah, also no. from Black, Wa Black no, Flag. This I almost stopped you from giving away. Cause yes. I'm just it's, it's just the right amount of hipster for me to actually use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, apparently everyone in this time period had pocket watches. Yep. That was apparently a thing you did. If you're an admiral and you didn't have a pocket watch, you'd be sent back to land. Yeah. I mean, I you, you, you didn't know what time it was. You were out Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when will we reach land? And then he couldn't. But it's, a, it's an official Assassin's Creed um, black flag pocket watch made of bits of metal and some plastic. But it it works. I've checked it, and you can set the time yeah, and with all. A, with a nice little chain to. Work. Yeah, 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 chain as well. Mm. It's supposed to hang here, I think, and then it's inside your uh, coat pocket. Oh, yeah, my tuxedo yeah, t-shirt doesn't actually no, have a pocket. No, 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 no. Oh, well, <laughs> you fooled yourself. Yes, it can't actually have a watch. Yeah, 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 yeah you can. <laughs> give it away. Yeah, we're 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 gonna give it away to some someone very very lucky. And I would also like to stress, now that we are streaming some Assassin's Creed stuff, that the last. The last version of our Assassin's Creed Challenge competition is still going on. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, all you need to do is go to our site, go to the Gamepedia section, find the Assassin's Creed section, and all the information is right there for you to yeah. participate. Yeah, I can remember because I've written the news piece. Yes. Hello. Um, the thing you have to do this time around is that you have to write a blog post about your favorite a Assassin's Creed protagonist. I'm pretty sure this is correct. Mm. If I'm uncorrect, <laughs> gloss over this. But I'm pretty sure it's a blog post about <coughs> your favorite Assassin's Creed character. You post the link to the news story that we've written a couple of days ago. You can find it by searching Assassin's Creed Challenge on Game Reactor. And we will see to the winners. And the winners get to be an expert on the franchise, yep. as it is with Sebastian here, who's actually won. Yes, which is, uh, which is why we, uh, we are lending him our ear. Yes. <laughs> And yeah. Sebastian, could you tell us a bit about what you did to win the competition? Oh yeah, I, I answer, answered uh, I think uh, nine questions about uh, Assassin's Creed yeah. One uh, about uh, Altair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really um, expert knowledge. So I'd say. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 old school to know something about your first yeah, Assassin's Creed. That, now that's so. back in two thousand and seven or something like that. 
So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've been you've been with the series from the start. Yeah. So I think we, uh, Sebastian, we're gonna uh, ring you off here, rest you, get you ready for uh, the trailer, which I'm betting that you're gonna watch at home feverishly. Yeah. Uh, so. We would like to thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts with you with us here on the stream, and uh, yeah. we will uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we yeah. might actually call you back uh, later yeah, on will. if you're up for that to talk about the the trailer yeah. itself. And yeah, we'd uh, like to get your reactions. impressions. Yeah, okay. of course. Thank you, man. Just uh, around uh, what? Uh, I, I'd say half past six. Yeah, something like that. Half past six. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's super. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he didn't glitch out. That's actually no, no. him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much to uh, Sebastian for calling in. One of our um, master assassins. Master assassins of. Uh, we can. You don't have to wear this no. now. Um, one of our master assassins who've won the Assassin's Creed Challenge competition, where we sort of, as we said just before, find experts around the game reaction community who knows a lot about the franchise, way more than Dory and I put together. Yeah. But that's because w we have other stuff to look after, <laughs> I think. Yeah, we need to look at everything. Yeah, yeah, we need to look at everything. I know stuff about yeah. a lot of different things. A lot right. of different things. So. Um, Please do do not hesitate to write about your favorite protagonist. And send us a link to the news story, and we'll find out who the next master assassin will be, who will yep. help us on the streams and that kind of stuff. So. But uh, speaking about the swag, have you had any sort of thought about how and who we're going to give it away to? I mean, the chat is as active as it's ever been. Oh, really? So uh, that's good. Actually, I think let's uh, start with uh, some questions from the chat. Yes. What are you expecting from the reveal? Or Ooh, what, what um, I'm expecting. We talked uh, to S for the chat. Yeah, we talked about uh, talk with Sebastian just before that. Arno might return. I don't think he's going to return. Mm. I think it's sort of become the Assassin's Creed mantra to try new things every time, to switch things up. So I'm thinking new setting, new protagonist. I, I'm. I might think that the victory thing is real. And we will see. Yeah, it, it seemed detailed yes. and kind of on the money. And not to um, be offensive to Ubisoft, I'm sorry guys out there. They have, there are so many people working on this that these leaks tend to happen and they tend to be right every time. It's only really with Division and Watch Dogs that we had been completely caught, sort of, uh, off our backs, really. No, I, I mean, think. they... Oh. They've had some uh, nice reveals at E3 a yeah, couple have. of years in a row where yeah. we're like, holy shit, where did this come from? I mean, they did uh, Watch Dogs. Yeah, they, they did, did yeah. Uh, The Division. Yeah. And then uh, Rainbow uh, Six Siege. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so was transformed from the old Patriots, and yeah. no one saw that coming. And I mean, now we are getting uh, this reveal of the new Assassin's Creed. So what do they have up their sleeve for E3 is the question. That's actually Because really the pressure is on. Is it a new IP or? Well, now we're getting way out of the pocket. But yeah, but uh, we we have time. We yeah. have time, right? Yeah. So, but I, I was I was thinking uh, if we get some sort of competition going in uh, the chat for good the idea. three games. It's a good idea. Yeah, the three Let's games. Start with three that. winners. Yeah. So, we could ask them a question. A question like, where would you like to see, assassin the next Assassin's Creed game take place? Yeah. Yeah, your dream setting your dream for an setting. Assassin's Creed. So not what you think no. about this game that is about to be revealed, but what you would really like to see yeah. for a setting. So the period of time, the, the, the country, the, the kind of the, the setting, like a short yeah, description yeah. Yes. of uh, what your dream scenario for an Assassin's Creed That would be cool. Would be. Yeah. yeah. And, and we'll we pick the top three. We'll pick the top three. So, and you will receive a PC copy of Assassin's Creed Rogue. Which is not old news, because this came out in November. So stop complaining out there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to pop off just for a second, because there seems to be uh, some lag with the stream and the YouTube not working. So I'm just going to jump quickly mm. behind the scenes and get yes. that working. And while we're at it, I would like to... Uh, 
I would like to say that my dream scenario for it, now that we've spoken about probabilities, because probability, I think, is that the Victory League is real, and we will indeed see the Victorian era of London and all that kind of stuff. You saw the videos. That's, that's my sort of estimate of what's probably going to happen. What I would like to see still is for them to go to feudal Japan. I know this is a this is something that's really really been up, people have been up in arms about because it seems that the sort of the Yatori Hanzo ninja kind of uh, orders that it was and worked in feudal Japan at the time would be ideal to set for an assassin order and the sort of uh, the colonists, the Americans, the British that came to conquer the country and turn, turn them to Christianity would be ideal at the invasive force as a, you could, maybe the Templar order. So that sort of conflict really lends itself well. Plus there are the sort of, um, the, the sort of the ninja style, um, it lends itself very well to the tool set of a classic assassin. The hidden blades, the smoke bombs, the uh, throwing stars, all that kind of stuff I think would be really ideal for them to go there uh, at some point. But that's what I would like to see. Prob probability is still that we will see the um, England, which I think is really interesting still because one, doesn't, one does not need to read about history for long to realize that the Victorian era, which we presume it's going to be in uh, around the 1850s, something like that, if the, the sort of the visual aesthetic style of the Victory League is to be believed, that's a really interesting period in time. So, but we are await awaiting with uh, great anticipation. And also uh, I uh, in the chat here, they are craving the Viking-esque sort of tone and setting for a game, and I think that would be very cool as well. It would probably, I think, be around the Scandinavia. Um, if, if the game was to take place, I think something like having Norway, Sweden, and Denmark uh, in a sort of a Scandinavian twist uh, with internal and external conflicts and these sort of Viking raids playing some kind of part, that would be very, very cool. Um, but we're also seeing Injun Coburn here wants to say he wants to see a, uh, an Assassin's Creed title in the Roman Empire during the Spartacus Slave War. That would be really cool as well. I think in Ubisoft books, this has sort of been crossed out that, you know, the, the Roman Empire and the sort of the, the, uh, the corrupt nature of the entire Orthodox order in, in, in Rome and at that time. Um, has sort of been, you know, they're they're looking towards towards uh, different shores. Um, so we're getting a lot of uh, we're getting a lot of uh, great suggestions here. I think um, one guy here says the, the dream game is set somewhere in Europe during World War II. I think that would be extremely cool. I do think that Ubisoft is very cautious of introducing firearms at a greater scale because that completely changes the dynamics. I mean, they've dabbled a bit in muskets and hand cannons and that kind of stuff, but I think having automatic Thompson rifles and M1 Garands, that kind of stuff, is really sort of dis would disturb the dynamic and completely eradicate uh, the need for melee combat, which is one of the key pillars of the game. So yeah. I think World War II would be commendable. I, I certainly hope that we would move towards more, more modern times, but I think still that with the Hidden Blade and that kind of stuff, they really, they have a sort of a buffer to about you know the end of the 1800s that they don't want to move further in that direction. Yeah, I mean it is supposed to be historical. Yeah. And with that comes that it needs to be kind of s far enough removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they can you know fiddle with it. It, it can't yeah. be recent too recent history. No. That we actually know exactly what happened. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, indeed. Just quickly, the uh, the YouTube mirror is up. Actually, I should compensate for the lag if you're having problems. That yes. You two. Mirror hey, is uh, hey, up. Uh, anyway, yes. uh, we have a mirror up. Uh, also, all you guys that are having issues, if you could email live at gamereactor.dk just with the country that you're in and the browser that you're using for our troubleshooting purposes. Yes. Later. So, yes, moving on. So, um, 
we're getting a lot of good suggestions, I think, here, and maybe it's time to select one of them because I have uh, a great one here earlier on uh, yep. from uh, Sam Sam 99 about Kubla Khan, which I thought was really cool. He's more down than that. More down. More down? Yeah, he's around there. You just had him. There. Yeah. XM XM 99, go for Kubla Khan. Oh, now, of course, the, the chat is so active that it keeps popping down. <laughs> I'm going to copy it to another document. We, we will read out your suggestion. Worry not, because <laughs> we are finding winners here. And if you come out with a, good, uh, with a good suggestion for your time period and setting, we will reward you. That is who we yeah. are. So XMXM99 says, go for Kubla Khan. Uh, Marco Polo would be there, confirmed assassin. Uh, other lore assassins, incredibly famous characters, Altair Sun. A period untouched by the video game industry. The settings is literally the gap between Altair's and Ezio's game. I thought that would be very cool. Yeah. And I like the idea of, you know, that we're not completely forgetting the other characters, uh, the other assassins that's been. So binding these people together through history, I think, would be very yeah. cool. So I think, actually, it's so commendable that it's worth a prize. Yes, Harry. so uh, XM XM 99 gets a copy of Assassin's Creed Rogue. Congratulations. Congratulations. This is only for you. <laughs> you cannot gift it to someone else. Yeah. This is only for you. Yes. And you get to experience firsthand. And we will check. Yeah, we will check if you have given it out because we're not, w this is not a, a, a birthday gift for a family member. That <laughs> you need to redeem this yourself. We will check your Uplay account. You'll give us the details later. So that's one prize given out, Dory. But there are other great suggestions in the chat. Yeah, the um, question is, will we go straight to another giveaway? Uh, let's let's uh, hold, wait a little bit. Yeah, let them hang a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get some more in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So t just to uh, reiterate for you who hasn't been paying attention, damn you, by the way. <laughs> um, there is, um, we, right now we have a challenge for you in the chat. And that is to tell us here what your dream scenario, your dream setting would be for an Assassin's Creed game. You have to describe the setting, who would be the main protagonist, the assassin, who would be your enemies, key characters. The more detailed you can get, the li more likely you are to yeah, win the, a copy. The more impressive the we more are. more impressive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we will reward you, we promise. We have a sweater, a pocket watch, two more copies of Assassin's Creed yeah. Rogue to give away, and the most coveted prize. Yeah. But, but uh, for this question, we have two more copies of Assassin's Creed Rogue yes. for the PC that we're giving away, and then we'll find something else for... We'll find something else. Something, something harder, yeah. I feel. Something much, much more challenging. So we're coming up now uh, Actually, th there's a comment here from uh, Ricardo, editor-in-chief of Game Director Portugal. Hello! It says, uh, Egypt or feudal Japan, go. But seriously, every AC moved forward. Do you think it could move backwards in the next games? I don't see why not, personally. I can't, I, again, uh, one, one person in the chat said, why not World War II? I can't see them move that far. Mm. And right now, if it's real, if the victory thing is real, if, then it would be about um, in some, some time in the middle of the 1800s, if it is that, you know, Victorian stuff. If it is real, then I can't seem, see them moving to World War I or that kind of stuff. Because then the world and the way, you know, you use firearms and the way vehicles work, then you would, th it would s they would seriously have to change yeah. the formula, something that and they've and been unwilling to do. They actually, they have like the solution right in their pocket, and that is what you were critiquing earlier, yeah. the modern day setting. Yeah. Because if the modern day setting keeps moving forward in a regular pace, yeah. they can go wherever and to whatever time period they want yeah. to fill in that story going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can't, I can't see them. I know it's been a trend that they've been moving forward, uh, even v um, very so slightly between 3 and Black Flag, for example. Very small tendencies here. But I can't see when the slogan of the series is still history is our playground, then I can't see why would they would restrict themselves to only going forward every time. Yeah. Because then we are reaching... The, uh, and also, if the series has to move forward, then we will reach a point where they where they can 
when they can't go any more forward. Yeah, in like six years' time, they'll be, oh, and last week. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> and I if they keep kept doing that, then eventually we would get the Assassin's Creed near future mech, uh, the robots are taking over the world, yeah. Terminator style, which every game under the sun is doing right yeah. now. And, and I mean, I don't. they, they, they couldn't go there. No. It's, it's just, oh. it's never, ever going to happen. Also, it completely breaks not only the concept but the yeah ca almost the, like the, the mechanics of the storytelling of the game. Indeed, and also one key thing that people I think miss sometimes is that Ubisoft is successful because they are very aware that they are games both speak to the same audience but also to different or uh, different audiences. Yep. So the more the further Assassin's Creed moves, the less audience there will be for a watch for a Watch Dogs sequel yep. because that is. At least believe I know there are hacking elements, but it's it works like a very modern day Assassin's Creed. So, and also you wouldn't move it past so it moves into the turf of Splinter Cell, another key feature, key sort of. Uh yeah. And actually, there's a, a great comment here from Norway One Two Four, which had skipped my mind. Yeah. Black Flag is before AC Three, so they have of course moved backwards. Well, there you go. Damn you, Ricardo. Damn you, Ricardo, for throwing us off the trail like that. <laughs> so. Uh, discarding Ricardo's comment mm. completely. Yeah. Um, Moving on. Yeah, I think I think definitely that it's possible for them to jump around. Yeah. And even one of the uh, one person in the chat said that his dream would be to see Egypt. And of course, if Egypt, I think in the you know the Alex uh, the uh, Cleopatra era yeah. and sort of the Pharaoh stuff, Pharaoh stuff, then we would have to move way back. But I still think that would be very interesting. Very mm. interesting to see. Here's a uh, lengthy one from uh, Maggie in the chat that I want to read up. Let's go. Uh, dream scenario would be Viking. You play Ooh. as a Norden protagonist trying to reveal some glimpses he had f of the first civilization. On your journey, you will be battling with the wild, the cold, and the Templars, of course. While hunting down these clues from the first civilization, you discover Templars trying to reach the same goal as you, which triggers a war. Our protagonist realizes he needs more training and power, so he seeks some kind of brotherhood to help him complete his his wishes. This is where he finds the Brotherhood and the battle for the understanding of the first civilization begins. Yeah. I think that's com very commendable, Dory. Yeah. I actually think it's so commendable that we might reward them with a prize. Yeah. Yeah. So congratulations, uh, Maggie. M A A G Y. M A A G Y. Congratulations on your personal copy of Assassin's Creed Rogue. Yeah. We will send this to and you. And smart to go with the Vikings, I mean. Very smart to go with the Vikings. That is also, that beats very strongly in our hearts here. And of course in all Scandi hearts. So, uh, yeah. And so uh, it should be said that uh, Ubisoft have just started their uh, their live stream countdown yeah. on YouTube. It's still, what, 15 minutes to go? Yes. But they, they've started the uh, the preamble. Actually, we can we can... We can see. Cut to it full screen right now. You can see, I mean, if those weapons don't kind of give you an idea of where this is heading, I don't know. Yeah. I would also, f just uh, a minute ago, we were sort of speculating what would happen. But I think looking at these things, we have, we have something to go on now, Dory. Yep. I mean, we have our first sort of, we have a cane. We have some knuckles, knuckle yeah, irons. Brass knuckles. Yeah. And some what sort looks like a miniature cannon actually looks like a miniature cannon, which has a slight pullback with a little ring. Uh, so, but I think we can definitely say I think from the sort of the clothing and equipment here that we're not going before Arno and the French Revolution. No, it doesn't rule out to be Arno yet, but I think. That if anything will have moved forward because that gear looks more high tech than what Arnor had at his disposal. <laughs> and a comment from Lords in '94: uh, Rain equals London. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, there's something about it. There's definitely something about that point because it's you know it's sort of a very sort of stereotypical. Well, in London it rains, packed for an English summer, all that kind mm. of th kinds of things. But one of the things that I'm really <laughs> curious about is an assassin wearing a knuckle iron. 
That seems to a be... A knuckle duster. Knuckle duster hmm. seems to be... And there is, <laughs> there's even little engravings yeah, in the sm- tip of each. Small little Because an assassin just can't wear knuc- knuckle dusters. Oh, no. He has to have them specially engraved. He needs to send a message. Yeah. Here's some bling for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like a very rich uh, American uh, mansion owner who has to have his initials engraved in his sort of very stupid white handgun. I think it's 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 that kind of stupid. But what do you think, Dory? Do you think that is actually actually a cannon on his on his uh, his arm there? No, it's it's some sort of like he pulls it and releases to shoot. Some sort I think of yeah yeah yeah. Th- I think I think yeah. that is also um, recently we have had on his arms as a part of the equipment because one the thing is the thing this reminds me of is the hook or sort of. Not a grapple hook, but yeah, the a hook blade. Hook blade thing, so it might be used for traversal or something. But th- then again, it doesn't look like it could support any weight, nah. so it's probably. I think it's probably for shooting, or the thing that uh, I think Batman has that. On mm. he has like uh, in he has a thing he can tranquilize with that comes out oh of yeah. his uh, his armor. So maybe, and then there's the cane, which looks like to be a. A seagull. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that's a vulture. That's a vulture. I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah. an albatross. Uh, I'm, I'm willing <laughs> to give you albatross. So we're coming up here on ten minutes, nine minutes till reveal, mm. and we will watch the trailer. We will go through it. Yeah. Uh, another comment here. Yes. We're just going to read up a couple of comments because we have one more game to give away. Yes, we have. From, uh, if I can find it here, uh, 66. Alexander the Great has a ver- uh, had a very close... I uh, need to scroll up to find this because it keeps updating. Sorry. Yes, stop being so active in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go? God damn you. We're ready for anything. Yeah. Vamp, vamp. Oh, but, oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're, <laughs> we're eight minutes till reveal here. Just to reiterate what we're doing, we are we have been live for almost an hour now. Now we will see the reveal trailer of the next Assassin's Creed. We don't know anything yet. We might know something, but we cannot tell you. We can tell you after the trailer what we actually know, what we don't know, and we will dissect the trailer, see what we can find, dig out every little bit of information as it becomes available. Um, right now, we are looking for a person in the chat who has spoken out about their dream scenario for an Assassin's Creed game and will be giving out one more copy of Assassin's Creed Rogue on PC. Yeah. Uh, Adrian uh, Tollefson Nielsen says, Industrial Revolution, you are an inventor or a businessman who are a grandmaster or someone close to the grandmaster. You have to adapt the order to the new industrial world that have a challenge of the world surpass the order's technology and techniques. Well, that's pretty good as well. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good as well. And then... Uh, uh, Monster Games 63, medieval times with swords, bows and catapults. So you would be a soldier in a war that gets caught in the war between the Assassins and the Templars. Uh, you would need to cap- cap- <coughs> sorry, capture castles. Uh, where do you go? Sort of medieval England? Yeah, capture castles to synchronize and smith your own weapons. I think that's cool as well. I don't know, they, they sort of danced around that period. Mm. I mean, Altair is close. Close yeah. to that sort of setting with some knights and something, I think, a bit medieval-ish, even though it's not exactly in Europe at the time, but I think there are sort of elements there that harken back to that period. Do we have anyone else so we can uh, consider everything at the same time? Uh, here's one from Xbox Fan. Personally, th- personally, I think an AC game set in ancient Greece would be amazing. Ooh. The Assassin headquarters of Greece uh, could be in Athens, the home of open-mindedness and that kind of stuff. That would seem like it would fit assassins. Sparta could be where the Temper HQ in Greece could be because Sparta is a very rigorous, strict, militaristic society. Anyway, you could uh, live there doing whatever you decide uh, to have us do for the first part of the game. And then Greece is threatened by the Persians led by King Darius in the Persian War. I would guess, uh, I guess could maybe be a sage. Have a piece of Eden? Um, so I don't know about that. Anyway, the assassins and Templars have to unite to defend their home from the Persians. 
which I think would be really cool to see. Greece is a perfect setting, I think, because there's uh, plenty of land and diverse areas to explore, but there's also plenty of sea for sailing and naval battles. You can not only stay on mainland Greece, but go to any of the surrounding islands, possibly even Rome or Egypt. The possibilities are honestly pretty endless. Also, the first Civ people played a huge role in ancient Greece, and uh, as that is what the Greek gods were. I think this could really help for an interesting modern day storyline where you, uh, as an assassin, have to locate a piece of Eden that is in Greece. Damn! I don't know about you, Dory, but I think that the winner of the last copy is pretty clear in my mind. Yeah. Too bad he's an Xbox fan because we have a PC copy. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I'm, I'm guessing that you want this either way. Yeah, you can, you can try putting it in there. Yeah, try. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the the disc the disc tray in the Xbox One is is the same size. I mean. <laughs> You you could put it in, see yeah. what happens. Yeah. I, I mean, so name Xbox fan. Xbox fan, this is for you for submitting an awesome answer. I really want to see that now. Yeah, and that's not gonna be <laughs> it. I'm sorry. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Maybe not that's quite an, Greek. Uh, yeah, ancient <laughs> Egypt. I think the cane no, knuckle Greek. dusters. Yeah. Congratulations, Xbox fan. Stay in the chat. We'll get your information and we'll send this to you very soon. As soon as we. P- Possibly can, yeah. and as the the mailman allows. Yeah. So congratulations. We will figure out. We still have yeah, more. And uh, sorry to everybody in the chat that uh, sent in uh, ones that I didn't get to read because uh, well the chat is bouncing on all over the place and uh, there was a lot of really nice long suggestions. But fret not, uh, we have more prizes to give away, so there still a good chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best stuff is to come. Yeah. In the sense that we have the flag, oh, the and sweater, also and the watch. Ivan64, please stop uh, sending your answer as... Uh, what? No, he's, uh, there's just oh, a, right. a, a guy in okay. the chat uh, spamming his answer. And I, I just that means that he's not eligible for not only this prize, but the other prizes. Yeah. So, so stop. Yeah. Stop now. So we're coming up on five minutes until reveal. So the f- I think the funny thing about Assassin's Creed is I have played them, some of them, and I have I'm interested in see where it goes next. But what I'm also mostly interested in th- that if you if you care about this industry, then you have to care about Assassin's Creed because it mm. has really become one of the mammoth series of the entire industry. I mean, it moves yeah. thousands of people uh, into offices every yeah, year. Yeah, and I mean th- there are a couple of uh, yearly franchises. Uh, big ones that you can talk about, but I really think when you look at the Assassin's Creed franchise, yeah. I mean, a huge open world game, yeah, yeah, new yeah. one every year, yeah. that's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I also think that, um, the, um, as we might know, and I know you've uh, read the, uh, maybe you've read the preview of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which we recently went on a trip to see, their new strategy is to have one studio and they, there are three studios in a cycle and then they alternate. Yep. So they all have three years, but it's all I- every game is only made by one studio. Whereas Assassin's Creed still goes with this mammoth thing where they have to employ, I think Assassin's Creed 3 set the record with over a thousand people working on it. Yeah. That's a tremendous amount of people working on one creative project. Imagine if that was a, a, an album or a movie employing thousands of people doing that. And I still think that that is pretty unique. Even even something like Rockstar, the GTA teams, only employ like 400, 300 people. Yeah, but also their cycle is vastly longer. Sa- vastly longer. But it is, I think they're pretty unique in that sense that so many different people and Ubisoft pulls different studios from different parts of the world who, with different cultures. That's also what it says in the beginning of the game that, you know, Assassin's Creed is such a cultural achievement in the sense that it comes out every year from 1,200 people that are vastly different. So if, even if you're not interested in the game, you have to be interested in the process, I mm. think, of creating something this big every year. And as you said, Call of Duty, while impressive, nonetheless, is a single-player campaign with divided into missions, very scripted, and then the multiplayer stuff, which, apart from you mentioned before we started streaming, is very fun. I, I know it's very fun. But it looks similar. There, it's, it is yep. a similar structure, but whereas Assassin's Creed has to create a vast open space every time, and you can't really, you can't really wonder when Unity really has technical issues because it's so difficult to put this together yeah. every year. Couple of questions that I want to jump on here. Yeah. 
Let's go. Uh, Nosensu has asked several times, can the new cannon shoot poison darts? Talking about the... Yeah, the we have no idea. Not, no, we have no just, idea. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. So you can, you can stop asking about that until in five minutes' time, I guess. Yeah. Um, then there are split questions on somebody says, ah, remove the co-op. And others say, ah, I wish this story could only be played in co-op. Yeah, yeah. So, so some nice yeah, trolling yeah. going on there. Yeah. Uh, Yes, people are still uh, posting their, their answers for uh, that little competition we're running. That's yes. over, <coughs> we're so sorry. over and done with. Sorry, we had three copies of the game. They're out. We're yeah. going to make something new uh, after the trailer is finished to give away the, the flag, yeah. the sweater, and the pocket watch. There are still stuff to give away, so stay tuned for more prizes. But the PC copies have been given away, and they were given away to good people, so stop yeah. complaining. And listener1234 is asking, how do we get the watch? I lagged out. Uh, first of all, if you are lagging, then uh, we have the uh, our mirror on YouTube running. You can check it out there. Uh, and also, we haven't decided yet. No, we haven't decided I'm yet. I'm so pretty sure that's going to be coupe Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> at the end of the stream, yes. we're going to be giving away the watch. Yeah. So are we? We're coming up here on the reveal. Do we have any like very specific uh, second marker? Uh, no, no, but we don't. No, we, we, we'll see it right here on our screen, and then we'll cut straight to that. Yeah, we will. We will talk, and as soon as something happens, just we'll just yeah. mute us out. We're basically uh, waiting for the uh, the Ubisoft uh, World Premiere event to start. Yeah, and uh, this is. Yeah. Oh wait, no, nothing happened. I thought something <laughs> happened. Nothing <laughs> happened. We're still waiting. I I don't suppose they can be late, can they? I mean, it's probably an algorithm or something that's very set to publish at mm. a specific time. Yeah, I so. mean, uh, oh, here, here we go. go. So uh, let's go full screen and mute us for a little bit. If we have something to say, we'll bring it back up. Go. My name is uh, François Pellin. I'm the uh, executive director for the studio and senior producer on the new project. My name is Marc-Alex Sicoté, and I'm a creative director at Ubisoft Quebec City. We're in the middle of production of a new Assassin's Creed game. There's hundreds of people working on the project. They're super, super hungry to work on this game and to take the leadership. There's that passion, not just to make it differently, but as well to make it their own. So today we'll be talking about the new period for the game, the new assassin, what's his motivation, and we will show you a walkthrough of the game. Super excited to present to you and to announce the new installment of Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. London. 1868, the center of the industrialized world. Profits see progress while workers never sleep. Slavery not only comes through irons and chains, but through our very struggle to survive. Time for a change. Enough of those who seek only their own gain. We're amidst an industrial revolution. The telegraph, electricity, are changing the way that we live, shaping our future. But it must be a future for everyone. A different revolution is rising, more subtle. A blaze from the ashes of an old brotherhood. We shall rise. Street gangs will be our armies. The slums our fortress. They say this is the modern era. I say it's time for a rebirth. 
and we shall lead the way. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place in London in 1868. The Industrial Revolution, in essence, is society going from almost a medieval society to the modern society in which we live in today. It's an increase in productivity that's never been seen before in the history of mankind. You see transportation breaking through. In the span of a few years, enough railroads were constructed to go around the circumference of the Earth. It's a world that's ruled by science. We'll see tons of progress in medicine that prolongs the lifetime of people from about 20 years old to 50 years old. It's a world that's no longer ruled by kings or by religion. It's a world that's ruled by money. And this is something that completely changes society. You have the upper classes, which still rule the city because they are the ones who have the right to vote. So the faith of the lower classes was pretty much to either work hard and to die young, or to resort to something new. But the industrial era sees the birth of organized crime, a bit as we know it today. It's really a concept that takes root in the Victorian era. People would bend together to try to defend their common interests in what we could call syndicates. So the new assassin of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, his name is Jacob Fry. Jacob is a born and raised assassin. He's going to have allies that are the street gangs of London. Evie is twin sister of Jacob. She's the more calculated, the more rational uh, personality. She's the one that's going to guide uh, Jacob through his quest to free up London. Jacob will always approach the situation with a really hands-on and head-on approach. So he will be more brash, more brutal, more uh, confrontational. He's all about the trill. He's all about the chase. Assassin's Creed Syndicate will be the fastest paced Assassin's Creed that we've ever built. The speed of combat in Assassin's Creed Syndicate has changed from the past. We are making combat much more closer range than ever in the past. The reason we're doing this is that the Victorian era has changed the way we think about weapons. You can no longer walk down the streets with a, a sword at your hip, you would be arrested. People fought with hidden knives, hidden blades, uh, with brass knuckles. So there's a lot of freedom for the player to create chaos. We are making combat much more like a brawl in which you have to control uh, the crowd and jump from one enemy to another enemy. One of the key innovations of Assassin's Creed Syndicate is its traffic system and it's going to open up so many more gameplay possibilities. Players can jump on top of vehicles, they can drive them, they can integrate them to parkour. They can kill and assassinate people from vehicles. It makes the combat much more faster paced, but also more brutal and more lethal than ever before. Let me show you what I mean in this first gameplay walkthrough of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. It's reckless. It's clever. The blighters control every criminal enterprise in the city. If they work for us... Yes, but they work for the Templars. Oh, no, they're paid off by the Templars. Slight difference. If we take control of the gangs, we take control of London from the bottom up. You are talking about building yourself an army. Miss Fry, tell him this is complete madness. You'd need to consolidate your control. I can keep the rival gangs and the police from sweeping in and seizing the territory. You can't very well send Bloody Nora an engraved invitation. We have no idea where they hold up. Yeah, we do. You found them? The 
gladiators are operating out of the rookery. Bloody Nora will be there. Good work, Clara. Tremendous work. Jacob. Can't talk now, Henry. Duty calls. To your health. Apologies, Mr. Green. We are now in the city of London, one of the seven boroughs that you'll experience in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The city of London was the economic and financial heart of London in the 19th century. The borough fully embodies the hustle and bustle spirit associated with Victorian London, booming businesses, busy sidewalks, and even busier streets. New to our game are iconic modes of transportation, including trains and carriages. Omnipresent in Victorian London, carriages will change how you play Assassin's Creed. You can take the reins and traverse the city faster than ever before. You can also hide in them, adding another tool to your stealth game or run over targets and enemies. The possibilities are endless. In this mission, Jacob wants to take over one of the Templars' control gangs in order to build an army against the Templars that run the city. To do so, he will need to conquer the borough by dislodging the enemy gang from their stronghold. Not unlike big cities today, rich and poor share the same environment. Even the richest neighborhood, like Westminster, had areas where the police would not dare set foot. These slums were where street gangs ruled. With the simple push of a button, we'll activate stealth mode as we are entering enemy-controlled territory. Also new to our game, the rope launcher will change the way you navigate throughout the city. With this new tool, you can climb the IS building in seconds or a zip line from rooftop to rooftop. Let's trigger Eagle Vision to study our surroundings. We can see that one of our allies is in trouble. Let's give him a hand. We first need to eliminate the lookout to make sure he doesn't call reinforcements. The throwing knives will take him out silently. Well, that doesn't look entirely honest. We are facing a lot of enemies, so the head first approach is probably not a good idea. Also new to our game is the ability to use the environment to take out your enemies. Another one of our allies is in trouble. Let's take care of this before it's too late for him. Are you in danger? No, citizen? you don't look the slightest bit disreputable. Please don't start any trouble. Now that our ally is free, for the help, we'll ask him to assist us in our fight for this slum. Here is the stronghold leader, highlighted in yellow. Let's try to take him out with stealth, as he is more dangerous than common thugs. We'll use the hallucinogenic darts to turn our enemies against one another.
This slum is now one, and your gang occupies the territory. Well, well. The assassins have come crawling out of their holes, have they? Damn it, boys! Deal with this! We were caught in a trap orchestrated by Bloody Nora, one of the seven Templar gang leaders. Her rule of the borough has been one of cruelty and suffering. We need to take her out once and for all. Let's go. Bloody Nora's thugs are trying to make sure you don't get to her, ramming our carriage to kill her. Our carriage has taken some damage but seems to be holding up. out confrontation between your gang and your rival for the ultimate control of the borough. Jacob feels right at home in these fights, thanks to our new fighting system, as it is faster and more responsive than ever before. focused and working really hard for the last two years in making sure that we have an amazing and polished single player experience. All the people I encounter on the teams, I keep asking to take good care in like the little street corner that they are working on to try to tell a story with all the tools that they have, with the crowd that they are placing so that the, the game has a story to tell everywhere the player turns a stone. It's an intimate relationship between the player and the protagonist as he relives his life in a pivotal moment in history. It's a completely new kind of Assassin's Creed. That it's respectful of the franchise, but that it transforms its gameplay in a way that makes it more fun than ever. I want them to feel like it's the best Assassin's Creed that's ever been made. It's a bloody marvelous time to be alive. An age of invention. So many clever blokes dreaming up impossible machines. Sorting away more gold than Queen Victoria herself. But none of those shillings ever makes it into the pockets of the poor devils whose blood is spilled building this glorious empire. The working class sleepwalks through life unaware of the machine that drives them. Let's wake them up then, shall we?
Yeah, there we have it. Assassin's there we have it. Creed Syndicate. And the box art here at the very end, and October 23rd. Yeah, October 23rd, Xbox One and PS4, Fall 2015 on PC. Yeah. So there we have pretty much every single sort of concrete information detail that we want. We have a release date, we have box art, we have gameplay, we have setting, protagonists, yeah. all that kind of stuff. We're, we're heading into another revolution. This time around is the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. A bit longer time period to take on. But Indeed, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that might be so, that might be so. A lot of stuff to take in here. And to help us do that, we have a Norwegian reporter, Andreas Bjørnbeck, who went actually, and we can say this now with confidence in our yes. minds, that Andreas actually went to see the game and was shown uh, oh, for press only at an event not too long ago. And so we are ready to introduce Andreas. Andreas, welcome to you. Thank, Thank you, so you for showing up here. <laughs> so, what did you think of the reveal? I, uh, I actually uh, liked it a lot. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it had a lot of cool new stuff, uh, a lot of new features. Um, I was kind of disappointed by some of the uh, graphical issues, like some tearing or lag. Yeah, but, um, but it should be said, uh, they, like they say down in the corner, it is pre-alpha footage that they're showing. And not exactly. rendered as well. But exactly. also, the yeah. game is coming out pretty soon for such a big game to still be it, pre-alpha. Indeed, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I, oh, that's, I that's also true. one of the... Yeah, I, I wanted to say uh, also about the graphical stuff. I. There, it's it's kind of it's kind of a, a a dualistic approach uh, thing here because you want them to be honest. You don't want more graphical downgrades. It seems to be one of the major gaming trends lately that they show off very 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 pretty uh, uh, early uh, PC demos like they did with Watch Dogs, and then the end product yeah. doesn't end up looking as good. However, I still oh. think that some of the uh, footage seen here was not up to the graphical quality you come to expect from a PS4 or Xbox One game. Mm. So, yeah. No. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, so, uh, most of the time I felt like it uh, was uh, stable enough, uh, for sure. Um, but when you have that combo of a graphical uh, downgrade and the sort of lag that sort of still stays behind, it's, it's uh, not optimal. But as you said, it's an alpha, so uh, we will see how that uh, yeah. turns out. So, Andreas, yeah, and then let, let's let's uh, touch upon what exactly you saw at, at your visit to the studio. I mean, there was no hands-on, obviously, but you did get to see a playthrough. Was it the same playthrough they just showed us here, or was it more like a longer version? It was the uh, the um, exact uh, same. Uh, it was done in a in a slightly uh, longer way or a slightly a, a, a different way uh, we walked a little bit m more around town uh, we saw some um, saw some tr some uh, railroads right, tracks yeah. actually um, and that's uh, perhaps what I was the mo mo the mo 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 most guys yeah, excited yeah, yeah. for oh, sorry oh, okay. <laughs> about that. Um, um, and we got to experience a lot more with the uh, the um, the uh, rope launcher uh, zip line. Uh, a, a lot of uh, fun. Um, yeah, th th that, that's yeah. one thing so that uh, pe people were talking about here before it started. They were showing off the hands with the weapons yes. on, on top. Yeah. It seems that he has actually that that was like a launcher for uh, psychoactive darts. Or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. He he but used that as launcher. Yeah, but yeah. what we didn't see is underneath he actually has a grappling hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So we, we saw it briefly yeah. demonstrated here. It's it's sort of two functions. I think uh, you've written about that in your preview as well. That it's also it's from primarily to get yourself from street level to rooftop very quickly. But you can also use it as a zip line. Was that used more in in the uh, in the demo you saw? Well, it was used more, but uh, in the uh, uh, same yeah. way uh, to get from a building to yeah. another one. Um, so, you know, uh, they, they want to, uh, keep that fast pace yeah. action, uh, they, they have from earlier games while, uh, making the buildings taller, more wide apart, um, which I felt worked out Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. 
it's all it's it's also been a a problem and sort of a way to innovate in uh, in the series in the past is that you yeah. want fast traversal, but you don't want that those traversal options to completely rule out parkour. You still want to be able to climb and down. I, I suppose that parkouring down is still is going to be a part of the game, but the yeah, I mean they, they always did have this uh, this problem that you were running and then you accidentally kind of ran into a box, all of a sudden you're climbing the box. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But w with adding a specific button for, for traversal, yes. uh, aside from running, yeah. I mean, th that's where, yeah. and, and you're saying that they're, they're keeping that in, in, in this iteration. Yes. Yes, th they, they are keeping the uh, traditional uh, parkour, um, the, uh, the um, improved version from, uh, from uh, yes. Unity. Uh, and they are actually also adding a specific uh, button to enter uh, windows, um, which, in my opinion, was kind of tricky, actually, uh, because I would sometimes just jump yeah, over yeah, yeah. or under or above it. I, I think <laughs> we know? all had that problem. Uh, I, I, certain, I certainly did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there were two things uh, specifically that came to mind, because our preview uh, of yours is live now, but... Um, there are some things in your preview that was not really touched yep. upon in the reveal. And most oh. importantly, I think, is that the sister of the protagonist shown is also playable. Yep. Yes. Yeah, we saw, we, we saw her there right. for a brief moment. Brief moment there on top of the horse carriage after the brawl fight there. But uh, did you see her being played, Tris? Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, they only played this exact uh, demo. Uh, we were told that uh, e Evie, uh, which is uh, her name, will be uh, playable. Uh, she will be playable both in the uh, in the uh, open world uh, setting uh, and also in specific uh, main tutorial. Okay. Sure. Now, having yeah. two playable characters would kind of suggest that, well, maybe some sort of co-op or something like that. Yeah. But, but maybe, maybe yeah. But <laughs> as it says in your preview. There is no multiplayer in the game. There, there that is true. Um, uh, this came up when I asked about uh, how uh, they um, they were planning on preparing for a oh, right, release yeah. uh, to to avoid the the uh, catastrophe that was uh, yes. Unity. Um, and they mentioned that apart from uh, beginning the uh, play testing earlier. Um, they would uh, actually uh, rule out m multiplayer as well as the companion app. Um, so, all hands on the the single player. That's screen. actually, I think that may be one of the biggest reveals of today. And even even considering both the trailer and uh, your written preview, is that we're actually going to get an Assassin's Creed na game now where. Every single bit of focus is solely on the single player campaign, yeah. not even a companion yes. app. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is uh, perhaps what I was most uh, shocked slash excited yeah, yeah. about uh, when I heard yeah. that. So w um, before the trailer, um, we talked briefly about you know the the amount of people actually working on the game. And now we can we can yep. sort of uh, say we can confirm that it is Assassin's Creed. The Assassin's Creed franchise is now being headed up by uh, Ubisoft Quebec City, which employs, as he said in the trailer, a few hundreds people, hundreds of people. Yep. But it's far from the thousands that reportedly worked on Assassin's Creed Three. Is it only uh, Ubisoft Quebec working on it? You know what? Uh, that is uh, what I heard. Yeah. That's all I heard. Um, uh, they um, they told me that the the whole studio is on this, so uh, you know everybody's yeah. on it uh, every day. Um, I do I cannot confirm nor uh, nor uh, unconfirm if uh, they are uh, getting any help from uh, Montreal or anywhere else. But uh, so far, Quebec is the main. Yeah. Uh, I think that is very very. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm almost a hundred percent sure that they are they will be getting help from other studios. Some coding help at least. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. but it's, uh, they've had what three years working on it now. He said two. Two. Okay. Which is not not yes. which is also different from the usual one year life cycle that Montreal Montreal yeah. has had. Yeah. Um, but the the funny thing is that despite the fact that Quebec may be getting help, 
almost all other Ubisoft studios are working on something else. Yeah. For example, Montreal is right now <laughs> heading up both Watch Dogs 2, which is in pre-production from what we've heard. What we believe. What we believe. Yeah. And Rainbow Six Siege is supposed to come out this fall as well, as well as all other Ubisoft studios under the sun is helping Massive finish The Division. Yeah. So, as far as help goes, not a lot of studios are available. So maybe this could be a more intimate approach. Maybe they could make the story better as it's not, you know, completely spread out yeah. on all these different studios as has been the uh, approach of the past. Yeah. Now, of course, as we saw uh, in Black Flag, we got some naval combat, which everybody really loved. That was not in Unity. No. Here we are in uh, in London, which of course has the things, but not a, a lot of no. It's, it would water be difficult. Around. Yeah. So, I mean, th they didn't touch uh, on anything about uh, you know aquatic boats and no, ships no, no. and stuff like that uh, during the the preview that you attended. No, uh, they they uh, did not touch upon uh, you know naval battles or anything anything like that. That was probably a little bit too uh, too narrow for the, the yeah. river. Uh, but they did uh, touch upon the uh, the use of uh, of uh, vehicles, and uh, we will be able to um, to use any type of vehicle that is um, you know seen in the game, uh, from horse and carriages to uh, to boats on on. The river. Oh, um, and to if then tra train if that as well, presumably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's also in in your preview, right? That he at that at that point yes, he wasn't allowed uh, to talk, but <laughs> that is something that I actually had to uh, ask about myself in in my interview. Um, and no, he was almost not allowed to mention it, but he was, uh, and he did mention that we will be able to. To jump on a train, um, you know, uh, as a as a normal person would, through the door, uh, or uh, to jump on the roof and uh, take a, a scenic ride. Oh right, yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait to mess with the signals and just two trains. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that that <laughs> yeah. That I thought of that immediately as well. So you mentioned horse carriages. We have trains and we have boats now. But as far as he mentioned. The Industrial Revolution always uh, also brings about, you know, more traditional vehicles w in the sense that, you know, uh, cars essentially. Yeah. Was there any motors? Was there any talk about? Of course, okay, it's set in the uh, within the Industrial Revolution, but was there any talk about how long a period within that it it's going to? How like how many years is going to span? Or uh, you know, the game starts in. A 1868. Uh, um, I do not know how uh, how uh, further the the game will uh, go after that. Um, but um, uh, if I'm just going to grasp from my historical uh, my my historic uh, knowledge, I I do not know when uh, the, when cars came on the market. It was probably more around the turn of the the century ish. Um, but if if cars are in, that that that, that would be cool. But we did not uh, see or hear anything no, no, about no. that. No, no, no. But it, it also it, it begs the question, sort of uh, what seems to be the the main crux of of the series is that how much time we actually get to spend with the characters. But it seems to me one of the yeah. greatest things about the reveal, which I'm sure that you also got to experience. Uh, now we're just beginning the trailer here, quick. Yeah, they just uploaded the uh, the gameplay walkthrough again, so we'll just we'll maybe we'll have it mu with muted sound. Yeah, he and this is on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I can't hear anything. Oh. So, uh, one of I think one of the greatest things that w which is which is showcased right here is that we talked about Connor from Assassin's Creed Three being a little boring, bit flat, bit bit stoic, but it seems to me that yeah. um, Jacob here exists more as a sort of pendant to Ezio and even Arno. Yeah, it's a, a bigger personality. Yeah. yeah. And it's uh, Yeah, I uh, I do uh, uh, concur with your statement that um, that Connor was sort of a um, very quiet yeah, type yeah, of yeah. Uh, hero. Um uh, and um Jacob seen Seems like more of a well, like they said, a charismatic brawler, a leadership yeah. type kind of guy. Um, he he seems to have a bit more uh, 
of a sense of humor, which uh, is up uh, everyone's alley. Um, um, apart from that first uh, first uh, scene we uh, we we uh, saw here, um, we didn't get get to to uh, see much else. But hopefully they've they've given him some more. Uh, yeah, yeah, soul. yeah. I, For sure. I do think that. Um, there, there, there can be many sort of disadvantages by setting in that era, but I think one of the advantages has to be that there is just more charisma. I, I, you know, the the very stereotypical way of seeing the British, you know, ha happy, charismatic uh, brawlers, all of them, yeah. as you described in your preview, and I think that might give the Assassin's Creed franchise at least some of the energy that it has needed. Yeah. I think because the, the characters, some ch characters at least, also in Unity seem to have a tendency to be a bit dry. Yeah. Yes. Um, in my opinion, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, need, uh, needs to be, you know, um, serious, but it, it also needs that mix of a little bit of uh, humor and, uh, and, yes, not complete uh, dryness. And um, Arno was on the more, um, more uh, one-sided guy he was more you know out for one yeah. thing and uh, and never looked uh, away from that goal so not much more to him uh, than as you mentioned uh, Ezio um but I'm al I'm always excited for what new uh heroes can uh, can bring and, and hopefully they will they will take sort of a different look at the um games and uh, bring some, yeah. something yeah, and, new. I, and I have to say uh I, one thing that is kind of I find kind of titillating watching this, uh, we saw him with the top hat and the jacket walking around the streets. Yeah. And that's what what has always yeah. bugged me a little bit about the Assassin's Creed games is they obviously don't fit in with their yeah, yeah, yeah. with their hoods and, yeah. and 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 stuff like that. But here he's walking around normally and fitting in with the the hat and stuff. And then into stealth mode he puts on the hood and I think and that and makes a lot of around. sense. Yeah. And we're also seeing them use. Yes. The uh, the grappling hook here, both to ascend and also to uh, you know, zip line, yeah, zip line. Yeah. yeah. I I think that 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 might speak to one of the, the I think the great uh, w the two great sort of gameplay mechanic additions that I uh, notice is the uh, the rope uh, launcher seems really cool, and the vehicle combat or sort of action vehicle sequences, which we'll get to in a moment. Yeah. More questionably, the using the environment against your enemies felt kind of flat to me. And I, while combat is brutal and visceral, I didn't quite see how they're changing up the sort of a bit, the, still the dryness of the the, co uh, the combat that has always plagued Assassin's Creed. Yeah, games. I mean, for, for for me with Assassin's Creed combat, it's always been kind of like you focus on one guy, yeah, and then you know you wait until the next guy attacks and then you counter. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it worked a, li a bit better in Unity. It did. To be it honest. did. Uh, they, they they really worked on it there, and I just hope they 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 keep making strides. In, in this game, but yeah, here we see one of the uh, environment attacks. Yeah, yeah, uh, I uh, I believe the um, the combat will be uh, the uh, exact same, you know, w with the uh, click to uh, to um, counter and click to uh, to guard and so on. Um, it looks more like say Batman Arkham Asylum or or something, but it works in the same way as uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's also what I want because the cool thing I think about uh, Assassin's Creed is that they also know when other games do something cool, then they can not copy it but emulate it in the. Uh, and I, yeah. I consider the Batman uh, Arkham combat system to be one of the best ever made. Yeah. So and I mean, and I mean, one yeah. of the best uh, games of last year, Shadow of Mordor. Indeed. Yes. Exactly that. It. it yeah. Kinda drew inspiration from all over the place and made it into this great soup and yeah yeah i think that also that they seem to be taking um the the thing i i like about it is that it it, it takes from unity that weightiness it feels heavy and it feels sort of uh you can sort of uh, i can almost feel it through the controller seeing him move around which i think it looks really cool yeah. so here's one one a new addition as well which i think is taken from liberation on the ps vita is these sort of Berserk darts, or what you want to call them. Yeah, and we actually we we have a yes. we have a comment here very quickly in the chat from K Win. I missed the whistle thing to lure guards. They actually just did that. Yeah, Andreas. Yeah, uh, the, you, you mentioned that in their preview as well that there are whistling is back. I I, I did. Uh, that is perhaps uh, one of the things that I I missed the most from uh, Black. No, sorry, from uh, 
Unity, and it will be back in um, in the syndicate. Yeah. In the syndicate. Yeah, yeah, I think th I think that's cool. At least you need you need sort of tools to lure guards away. Otherwise, stealth is just going to be a very very bland affair. I think if you don't have any. Either you you do stealth or you do combat. There has to be variations of the yeah. two. So, yeah, exactly. So here we get a little the only glimpse of the game map we get to have. But uh, Andreas, you mentioned something very specifically about the size in your preview, didn't you? I did. Yes, uh, they told us that each uh, b borough or uh, sort of you know a district of uh, London. Uh, will be the size of Rome in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Nice. Um, and that uh, speaks for a very large uh, <laughs> That's area. Insane. Any, large. any idea on how many boroughs there are? Seven? Uh, seven boroughs? Seven yes, boroughs. seven. Okay, that's, that's quite yes. a lot. Yeah. Yes, that is a lot. So that's seven <laughs> times Rome. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, times that's Rome. really... And then we get a glimpse here, I think one of the most... Uh, Impressive aspects is the race through the city here. Yeah, yeah, it uh, it looks very good in this uh, trailer here. Um, in the demo, it was a little bit more chaotic. Um, they told us that they wanted to uh, to make the game very dynamic, which is you know which uh, which uh, sounds fun. Um, to me, I feel like. I feel like it can be um, a miss and hit uh, because uh, sometimes it doesn't work out and your your uh, carriage get trapped behind like you know ten others yeah. and, um, and and it can get too chaotic. But hopefully, you know that was an alpha. Uh, we have some time to, to go yet. Yeah, so. we do. But uh, as Story mentioned, it, it is still early, and they're, I think they're very candid and very honest about how the game looks and how the game plays. Even the Yep. less uh, sort of polished aspects of it. But then again, also yeah. you have to and remember... And I mean, looking at this, even though a lot of things may seem a bit unpolished, just look at the, the reflections in the water yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, th they're definitely working on beefing up some of the, uh, the graphical fidelity of it. Indeed, yeah. So, so uh, while it may yeah. not have the initial uh, early polish that Unity had, Unity also was a victim of downgrading the visuals uh, comparing to the first reveal. Where this maybe may seem more confident in how the game plays and not I essentially how the game looks, yeah. which I think shows promise at least. Yeah. Here, I actually want to mention yes. one of my first reactions when I saw anything from uh, Syndicate was that oh, it's like uh, you know Gangs of New York except in London. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it <laughs> with the top hat as well, Daniel Day Lewis, he was there. And also we have one more one uh, w which was not in the reveal. If you just scale back a little bit. Yeah. We get the first sense of the DLC, which will be free with every pre-order. And I thought there were some key characters here, which I thought was cool, which we can just briefly see once the game ends, uh, the trailer ends, right here. There we go. There we are, which is a Darwin and Dickens conspiracy. Oh, okay. And I believe that they also, went on your trip, Andreas, mentioned Dickens. They uh, they did uh, mention Dickens. They they mentioned his um, his uh, his book and a, a famous quote from it. Uh, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, um, and that's probably where this DLC uh, comes from. Uh, we were not informed about any sort of DLC, um, so this is actually new to me as yeah. well. Yeah, but I think. Um it, it, uh, I'm not uh, that big on, on history or that good at it, so um, I, I, don't, I can't quite you know, remember uh, right at the tip of my tongue which important historic figures are present at the time, but now that we're speaking about Darwin and Dickens, I think that, at least speaks, that speaks volumes, I think, of the amount of historical yeah. figures you can, you can draw from in that period. And I also, think that's if I'm not mistaken, I mean, Jack the Ripper hits in right Jack around that Jack the Ripper, time. yes, yes, yes. So. And I think that's very yeah. exciting. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we, we, we have a lot of, his, of historical um, uh, gold to uh, take from this chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Among them, Darwin and... Uh, yeah, and I think uh, that's also one of the sort of the key marquees of Assassin's, the Assassin's Creed franchise before was that you sort of 
what weave in these historical figures that somehow is either attached to the Templar order and secrecy or yeah. the assassin uh, assassins, which I think is very cool. Yeah. Um, but we'll yeah. get to see exactly like yeah, no, it's sorry. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. They they did the uh, the same thing in in Assassin's Creed Two with with the. Da yeah, Vinci. Da Vinci, uh, and of course in Assassin's Creed Three, uh, Arnold, Franklin, all, all the, uh, George Washington, yeah. uh, which I, I, I thought was really cool to have them sort of be a part of this narrative. So, um, and while we don't get a sense of much of the story, maybe you can elaborate of some of the thing, things we saw. Did Did you learn more about Jacob and Eve, uh, the siblings here? Uh, well, we we uh, learned that this is obviously you know taking um, taking uh, place in the in the in the height of the British Empire. Uh, the uh, Templar Order is um, at the heart of it in London, uh, ruling it almost. Um, and it is in, in this chaos, this this battle in London the, between rich and poor. All they knew that that the assassins uh, still try to uh, fight them back. Uh, the uh, Templars ha have actually won the war, we, uh, we were informed, uh, but there are still those assassins uh, fighting oh. back. Um, even Jacob uh, were born outside of London, uh, and ever since their ch childhood, they were uh, trained in the arts of the assassins, which to me uh, felt good to hear, because I've been kind of sick of playing assassins who didn't go oh, up yeah. as assassins but just learned a trick like yeah, that. Yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> you know? Even for Arno and Unity. Um, mm. Yes, yes, Arno and uh, Edward was weird yeah. to me, I felt. Um, but, um, yes, and so uh, once they uh, uh, reach London, it is their first time uh, getting there. So we will, uh, like, most of us have probably been to London, but it will be both of ours first yeah. time. <laughs> first time. But I think it's. Yeah. I I, th I think that's really cool. And as you said, I've been very sick of these three, four hour tutorials where um, there the uneven pacing of it is that we're them even with Arno and Unity, you're them as the, you play as him as uh, when he's a child and when he's young. But yeah. then suddenly the sort of assassin thing kicks in and then he learns every single yeah. skill in the book yeah. uh, over the course of 10, 15 minutes through a tutorial there, which seems very yeah. uneven to me. Yeah. So I think this is a better yeah. way to do it. We see London with new eyes through them, but they know all the tricks in the book already. So, Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so I hope it'll feel like more of an assassin like uh, Altair, who actually you know, uh, had been trained for years and years. Uh, rather than as you yeah, said, yeah, I think that that that's, that sounds really cool. Yep. But um, I think for any more info, of course, the preview is live on the site right now. Yep. So, regardless of which country you're from, the uh, the Assassin's Creed preview, Syndicate preview should be up by Andreas, which goes into more depth uh, than we've been able to uh, come up with here. Uh, about the game and what you came to see. So we would just like to thank you for stopping by, Andreas. And uh, thank you yeah. uh, so much yeah. for having me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and everybody go to the Game Reactor website and uh, read his preview in your local language. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, yeah. So, Dory, what did you think of the reveal? I was uh, quite impressed. I think it's an interesting period of, in time. Very uh, interesting. I yeah. think uh, that the uh, the focus on single player is a good one. I think is what yeah. the series needs right now. I Indeed. think uh, they may have bitten a little bit uh, more off than they could chew with Unity. Yeah. I mean, uh, the launch issues were obvious for almost everybody that yeah. played. Uh, this should uh, guarantee that we won't have that because I, th I think a lot of the issues were with you know people communicating t uh, together. Of course, some people, ha a lot of people, had issues within single player, but that may have been because, well, the focus was on polish elsewhere. Yeah. But I also think that it it uh, it's funny to me actually that they didn't. Uh, if I was Ubisoft Quebec, that was one of the first things I wanted I wanted to say mm. was that we know that one of the issues has been that we have maybe strained ourselves too thin with all the different aspects of the game that needs to work at the same time. But now we're scaling it back. We're going back to single player and we're making sure 
that the polish is there, the polish that you uh, want. I actually want to jump just a little bit back here because uh, yeah. they're showing off the uh, the weapons that he has. Oh yeah, yeah, so we yeah. We have the Jacob Fry here. Uh, and we, we learned his character. gang is called the Rooks. Yeah. Kukri. So we have the, uh, the Kukri, they're, they're kind of a... It's been in the game before. Yeah, but it's like an, kind of an India style knife, right? Yeah. yeah. So there he uses the hidden blade, takes the Kukri back, and that, <laughs> <laughs> that is so mean. And the revolver, we just talked about yep. not having like classic firearms in it, uh, but here we are with a Automatic yeah, revolver. revolver, throwing knives, and uh, of course the brass knuckles or the knuckle duster. Yeah, yeah. Which is used a, a lot in the gameplay demo as well. And yeah. uh, see, that is the the assassin gauntlet, basically a. Uh no, but yeah, uh, that that is also used for the rope launcher and yeah. all that stuff. So we still don't know, apart from the uh, hallucinogenic dark starts that was yeah, that on the top of the end, demo. What he, yeah, what we, Th what I he mean, there's, there's, there's going to be several different types of, of darts. I mean, yeah, there always there's is. It's going to be a normal dart. There's going to be an exploding dart. Yeah. Or, you know, but and we could all dart. yeah, and also uh, throwing I'm, throwing I'm knives. I'm guessing, but I'm, I you're feel not pretty, guessing. I'm, I feel pretty confident. I feel pretty confident in confirming to every single <laughs> one of people here that there's going to be several different types of darts. So. Oh, and uh, Alexander WG is saying, please acknowledge the cane sword. That's gorgeous. Did we didn't get the, to see did it. Did you show the cane sword here earlier? Maybe we just missed it here. There's no cane sword. When he walks up. I mean, he, sh he shows it in his hands, but he doesn't use it, does he? I believe it was. M it may have been shown a little bit earlier here. Dory, I think it's time to give away a prize. Yes. You work on that. I'm going to find that cane sword. Yeah. Everyone, it's time for another prize. Yeah, right there. That's the cane sword. Yes. Oh, right. Looks cool. And there's the little, yeah. Nice spot, Alexander WG. I think he actually, he needs to get something just for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, welcome to a new Assassin's Creed flag. Yes, black from flag. From black flag. Which you, we won't unpack here for your pleasure. Mm. But the you other can. side is more interesting, I think. There we go. Pirate stuff. <laughs> this is a flag that you can use for flag-like things, and it has many functions, such as waving in the wind. I don't yeah. know, yeah. I mean, you could use it to dress yourself, although I wouldn't uh, yeah. advise going out in public. No, 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 because then you'll get arrested. But you can use it for a, a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Congratulations for that. It's time for the sweater, something I've been looking forward to. Yep. And um, the question I propose to the audience here looks like this. This is the front, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. More interestingly, the back, which has the, the logo in the, the ear. logo with the pirate symbol. Um, what was your favorite part of the Assassin's Creed reveal? The trailer we just saw. Yeah, your what favorite was the, part. The, the most important detail or or part of the gameplay or yeah, what, what you're most looking forward to when you get your hands on with the game. Indeed, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So um, uh, Maggie is asking, how do I redeem the AC rogue uh, that I want? That's a, 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 a fair point. Uh, I will send you a message on the Game Director website. Thank you. And then you will send me your address and I will send it in the mail. Thank you, Dora. That's uh, how that works. That means I don't have to do it. Yes. Oh, it's so nice nice of him, right? Or so I should say, there will be a message sent. Oh, that yes. doesn't guarantee that I have to do it. R oh, that, yeah, yeah, a we, message we will be sent from well. you. Yeah, yeah <laughs> interns as well. Uh, uh, behind this wall, a lot of people are sitting just waiting to get something to do. So we're going <laughs> to give them the thing that they need to do. Yep. So here, uh, a, another character. And the, the funny that you mention it, right? This guy does not blend in in London. <laughs> that guy in that white, white adornment with the gold things, I mean, he's going to stick out. I'm man. glad that you pointed out, pointed out his clothes. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, uh, for Altair maybe, in the Middle East at yep. that period, yes. But at that point, no. But I really like that you're, uh, what you said about him actually blending in. Yeah, like right there. I actually feel almost like when going into stealth mode, he should be t putting that on. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the hat is stealth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's true that the hood, especially Ezio with his white and red sort of, and did you remember? It's supposed to be a secret order, but his belt has this huge assassin yeah. symbol on it. So Ezio, you're not fooling anyone, mate. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just stupid. What is that? Oh, just a band I like. Yeah, it's just a band <laughs> I really like. Uh, we're already getting in some answers here. Oh, yes. 
Chelte is saying much more faster gameplay. Indian Coburn, of course, is saying Magnus trophies. Oh yes, yes. Uh, I'm I'm proposing that the trophies is going to be easier now that there's no goddamn multiplayer trophy. <laughs> so yes. Ludo uh, Perpetuo uh, actually says the fact that there is a gun with LSD inside it. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, the, oh, the LSD like the, gun, yeah, yeah, yeah which makes it, yeah, it, it makes you attack your friends. Yeah, Kaywin is saying the cane sword that was super cool. Even if we didn't get to see it in action, just kind of want one based on the image. Yeah, it is a cool image. Uh, Hundred Cloud Four saying my favorite part uh, were the brawling and accents because of Sherlock Holmes, of course. Yeah, I actually said this during the, yeah, the you trailer. Said that as well. like, why are the characters talking with English accents? They should be talking with French accents. Yeah. Because in the French Revolution, everybody was talking yeah. with English accents. Everybody accent. was talking very English <laughs> in the <laughs> French Revolution. So we were talking about a, a trade-off, simply. Um, yeah. Angry Monkey Lama says, it would have to be the grappling line. I could see myself just doing that to traverse the city and uh, doing to get over here with the enemies. I like that. I like uh, the patina on the roof as well. Yeah. The moss or whatever More it is. More people saying the cane sword, the grappling hook, and the cane sword. The grappling hook. Uh, cane sword. Mamaluk is saying, I'm really interested in seeing more of the trains. I believe I saw trains crashing early in the video before gameplay. Yeah, that was actual historical footage. Very hist yeah, historical footage. But as, as Dory pointed out, it is a very cool feature, I I especially since, uh, as Andreas pointed out, that trains can either be boarded regularly or they can be written on top of, which raises some questions. Uh, we saw a concept uh, um, art f uh, picture where there was combat on the trains, yeah. which I think uh, looks really, really cool. Uh, yeah. Then there's also, uh, let me see here, uh, Luchi1 says, I love what they've done with the stealth. It is much more in-depth than the previous games. I hope we can use the environment a lot to distract guards. Also, I like the touch that they use regular clothes when not in stealth mode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also think that they have done some tremendous improvements uh, in stealth, but I think that was mostly Unity's sort of honor. Yeah, to yeah. Uh, this uh, is it seems like they're bringing it in from Uni Unity and refining y it. Yeah, as it is a lot of aspects. Uh, and we, we have to be honest as well, I mean, I mentioned Call of Duty uh, earlier, is that you sort of get a sense of core franchise values as it is in the preview. Th and th they said, you know, this game is about so-and-so, stealth, combat, navigation, that yeah. kind of stuff. You can't you can't do, for every every person saying that Assassin's Creed is just the same every year, well, it is a series of games. It, but it is constantly evolving. Yeah, it is It is based on the same core concept. You can't really, it's not s all of a sudden going to be a first-person shooter. Yeah. But that would be, that would be pretty uh, cool. Xbox fan is very specific about what he's most excited for. Oh, let's go. His hat. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> very specific. <laughs> but Xbox fan already won. Yeah, yeah. You can't win again. Oh, how dare you? Uh, yeah. 66 says, to me, the outsticking guy looks uh, very much that he is from the same sort of creed that the one Altair trained. Would this be very interesting? Yeah, so basically he means the, that he is trained within uh, as an assassin from birth. Yeah. I believe. I think that, uh, Andreas mentioned that, I think that is very... Did you notice, by the way, when he stabs and there's co blood in the air, that some of the blood is white? Looks like water. Hmm. Look. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe Again, pre-alpha. Pre-alpha, pre -alpha, sorry, yeah. Pre -alpha. It is says, and you know, you, c you can't blame them for being honest. I mean, it says right there. Yeah. And it says in the beginning, just before that, uh, on the, the railroad station, pre-rendered footage, everyone. Yeah. There's no gloss. There's only the core gameplay concepts that they've been... I I I and I, you, can, you can commend them for that. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's the reverse of what Unity did. It's gameplay first, visuals after. In this case, yeah. in Unity's case, it was visuals first. Uh. Yeah, Nonsenso says, I like the regular clothing and the cane sword and the grappling hook. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Dry, I'm going to let you pick a winner now. Oh, dang. Yes. I have the power. Yeah, he has the power. And that corrupts uh, Dory absolutely. Yeah. If you were in that game, you would be in Westminster and you would be a Templar. <laughs> I guarantee it. I guarantee it. That was going to be you. See. So? Oh crap, we're running out of time, Dor. Yeah. Move it, move it. Yeah, but we have to give out the watch as well. Yes. Thank you everyone for tuning in to see the Assassin's Creed reveal. We're running out of time here. We have spoken to Sebastian, a winner of our Assassin's Creed the Challenge competition about his hopes for the series. We've talked with Andreas, who went to see the game exclusively, not exclusively, but along with some other journalists in Quebec at, at the developer. 
um, to talk to him about what he saw, what was not in the reveal, which was no multiplayer, and uh, that there that the sister of Jacob, which we're seeing right here, is also playable. So a couple of stuff, a couple of reasons to go and read the preview. Um, congratulations to all the winners so far. We are getting to the sweater here and ultimately the watch. Um, I think uh, actually the the chat is moving so fast that what I'm gonna do is after the stream, I'm going to figure out which one won and send it out then. And the watch, I think will be given out to a person who during over the course of the stream has been a productive member of the chat. Yeah, we'll actually, give yeah. It out to a sort I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to find somebody to give the, the sweater away and then we'll do that for the watch. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over the entire chat, who's been uh, participating, throwing good questions and uh, not spamming. Yeah, not spamming. Up, uh, sort of the chat's MVP, you could call it. I mean, uh, the most valuable player in the chat will receive this watch here, and uh, the sweater will still be given to a person. Yes, I, I see your comments, uh, 66. I see it. Yeah, we, s we see <laughs> it. We see everything. But we would like to thank you for tuning in with us here to watch the trailer and hear what we had to say. And we've been blessed with having uh, great people in the chat uh, sharing their views of both the reveal and of the Assassin's Creed franchise in general with us. And I don't mm. think there's any... Did uh, Mameluk win earlier? No. I don't, I don't no. think so. No, no, no. He, uh, Is it time? We can make it. Yeah. He actually uh, comments on the really interesting seeing more of the trains. Which I think is a very uh, a val valuable thing to say. Yeah, because I'm, that's one of the things. Of all the things that we were shown, what we were shown least of, and what I'm mo most interested in is the trains. Is the trains. Yeah, the sort of the epicenter of the industrial revolution. Yeah. I mean, the most modern part of the game, I think, is the most interesting part. So, congratulations to name to uh, Mameluk. 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 Congratulations to all that the winners. That was lucky. Eh? Yeah, that was lucky. This, this watch will be given out to the chat's MVP. We will be scouring through it and finding you and we'll sending you a message. So be on Game Reactor, check your messages, and maybe you'll be the lucky winner of this amazing watch. Yeah, I hope you liked the, uh, the reveal. Also, if any of you had lagged, uh, dropped out, or missing Sorry. or something, the, uh, the replay will be coming up either later this afternoon or tomorrow. We will also be linking the entire chat uh, as comments to the video so you can go through it and uh, yes. see if our choices were correct. Yes. And uh, like I said, we'll be going through it, finding somebody that uh, deserves the watch. Now, uh, yeah, that has been the reveal of uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah, we're reiterating here. It is October uh, 23rd. Put on the hat there. October 23rd on Xbox One, PS4. If you pre-order, you get the uh, Darwin and Dickens conspiracy. Um, the PC release date, as you can see right here, is a tentative fall 2015. I think it's probably safe to assume you can expect it a month after, as it has been with Rogue and Unity. But until now, thank you so much for tuning in to see the reveal with us. With there, I'm sure there will be m much more news about Assassin's Creed Syndicate in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, and for even more details, like we said earlier, go to the Game Director site uh, of your language choice and read the preview. Yeah. And uh, with that, we are out. I will see you guys tomorrow.